Hello everyone, welcome to Mark 1 Design EMC video channel. In today's session, we're going to talk about how to set up a pre-compliance EMC test for mains powered product. The mains powered product can be home appliance or multimedia device and so on. To test the conducted emission of mains powered product, we need the setup showing here. We will go to details. Basically, you would need a mains listen, ground plane, and you also would need an isolation transformer. The reason that you need an isolation transformer is because, because of the way the listen is built, they have huge capacitance inside. When you switch on the listen, chances are that you will trip the RCD in the house. So you do need an isolation transformer to prevent the tripping uh, from happening. Okay, so here shows you the um, test setup for a mains powered product. Now, it is a good idea to test the, any product against a benchmark uh, result. So often we use a well-branded product, which we know will definitely pass the EMC standard as a benchmark test. So in this case, we're using a well-branded uh, hairdryer. Uh, as you can see, the test setup shows uh, uh, listen, uh, ground plane, and we have some insulation uh, material to support the DUT. And because the DUT is a handheld product, according to the standards, you will also need to have an uh, artificial hand. Uh, then on the product handle, we have some uh, we made some foil wrapped around to represent a hand holds the product. Um, and here, of course, you would need a spectral analyzer to measure either the conducted noise on the line or on the neutral line, on the live line, on the neutral line. And first of all, I have to stress one important thing, which is high voltage safety. Now, lots of the videos I watched on YouTube talking about pre-compliance EMC testing, especially the mains powered product, they barely touch the high voltage safety, which in my opinion is not correct. So in this case, as you can see, for high voltage safety, you need to bond the LISM front panel securely to the ground plane. Same applies on the rear panel of the LISM and using copper copper tape to tape it and the listen itself is earthed to the isolation transformer uh, casing and the transformer itself is earthed okay so make sure that the ground plane is properly earthed this is for high voltage safety because any leakage current um, puts on the ground plane can potentially um, damage yourself or kill yourself, okay? So that's very important. Now we look at the uh, Lizen front panel. This is a Lizen 16 amps, 230 volts rated from a tech box. On the front panel we can see is fairly straightforward. You have the uh, 10 dB attenuator or a transient limiter you can choose on or off and here you can select to either measure the line voltage or the neutral voltage basically the conducted noise can be measured from both both line or either line this is the RF output of the listen which you are connected to your spectrum analyzer the reason I didn't connect to the spectral an analyzer is because this output is you need to check the output of the RF out of the listen. So first of all, you need to check whether the voltage level is within your spectral analyzer uh, RF input. Any voltage level higher than the specified input of the spectral analyzer will damage the RF input or the RF front end of your spectral analyzer. So be very careful about that. And the second thing is, even I measured the RF out of the listen, 
idle, idle in the idle state that is within the limit, I'm not going to connect it until I run my product. Simply because the product on the test can be highly inductive. So by the time you switch it on or switch it off, there might be a very big kickoff uh, voltage, or often we call it back EMF induced, that can also damage the front panel or front RF input of the spectrum analyzer. So I, I will make sure that when I turn the uh, device on, then I start measuring. And before I switch off the DUT, I will make sure that I disconnect um, the uh, spectral analyzer. So that's very important to note. Here you have the um, your mains power out connected to your um, DUT. Here we we're using an artificial hand because this product, as I said, is a hair dryer, and by testing standards, you will need a hair, uh, you will, you will need an artificial hand. So. Just to stress the points we just made, high voltage safety first, then always make sure that the spectrum analyzer RF input is well protected by checking the listen RF output and also by disconnecting it in the right time. And for handheld mains products, uh, if the standards require artificial hand, connect artificial hand. Okay, so now we are going to uh, have the product tested. Okay, so everything set up. Switch on the listen. You can see the light is on, and we make sure artificial hand is connected, power cable connected, and we're going to measure the conducted emission on the live line. And then um, I turn the attenuator off because I already checked the RF output. Um, before I'm going to connect the spectrum analyzer. Okay, as I said, I need to switch on the product first. So I'm turn on the product, and now I'm going to connect my spectrum analyzer. Okay. Okay, to start this conducted emission test of this product, I often use a software together with the spectrum analyzer. The software is EMC View, which is developed by TechBox. There are many good reasons of using this software, which we will see during the demonstration. This software, I believe, is compatible with most of the spectrum analyzers from RIGO, Sigland, and Rod Schwartz. And in my opinion, if you have already spent hundreds or thousands of dollars on uh, Listen or Temcel or Current Probe, then it is worth perhaps spending a few hundred dollars to get this software for the huge benefits that it could bring for your EMC pre-compliance testing. Okay, let's start the software. And as you can see, the user interface is quite neat in the sense that you have the main screen here and all the functions showing here. Let's just do a demonstration here. So the first thing is you need to connect to your device. So on the device, I connect, collect device, then because the spectrum analyzer I use is connected via USB, so connect USB, search, and then you can see I found the device and then connect you can also get your Visa version, which is showing here. Then you just close it. Then on the uh, left bottom of the screen, you can see my um, Sigland SSA3021 is being connected. Okay. So as I mentioned, this benchmark product is a handheld mains, mains product. So we need to test the conducting emission to the correct standards. Now, the software itself comes with lots of standard limits and test preset files. So if I now collect, collect file, then I want to load a project. Load project. So all projects are saved in a folder called source folder. As you can see on the screen, you have a wide selection of different testing standards. 
you have the automotive BMW testing standards, FCC 15, which is the uh, standard they test in the United States, and you have the CISPA 11 to 35, all sorts. So for these products, I know the proper testing standards that it needs to be tested against is EN55014. So I'm going to click this one. So in the subfolder, you can see you have CN, RN, and TC, which stands for Conducted Emission Test, Radiated Emission Test, and Tem Cell Test. Now, CISPA has defined uh, limits for Tem Cell Test. So that's quite uh, straightforward. You can just load the project file and test using a Tem Cell. For this test, I'm going to test the conducting emission using Lizen. So click. And here again, you have lots of selections. And for this product, we will test EN55014 household mains. So double click that. OK, so the project is being loaded. So the limit is showing here. As you can see, the blue line is the quasi peak limit for this product and the red line is the average limit okay and you can see the start frequency is 150 kilohertz and stopped at 30 megahertz you can define a margin which you know if you want to say okay i wanted to achieve a margin of 10 db or 5 db you can put in here so in this case we put let's say 6 db margin and it gives you 6 dB margin just for the average value. And of course, you can put the same margin on the average. And you can see the blue dashed line as the margin value for quasi peak. Here is the cable um, characteristics, RF characteristics. So you can select your cable, which is often tiny but let's just put it in in this case so in this case I'm using uh, n type to BNC type 75 cent centimeter long RG223 cable so click that and for the listen it is a tech box model which is tech box TBL 50162 and now, even with this module, you can have the attenuator off and on options. So this we already explained before. So we, when you have attenuator on, of course, you protect the uh, RF input of your spectral analyzer. But often for pre-compliance tests, I tend to turn the attenuator off. But of course, before that, I, of, I always make sure that the uh, measure the uh, value not exceeding the maximum input of the RF input. So in this case, I'm, I'm selecting uh, 5016-2, which is the listen model, and with the attenuator off. Okay. The next is the uh, amplifier or attenuator ratio, which you can select uh, 10 dB, 20 dB, um, or any values you want. You can also define your own in the uh, log file then it is the antenna um, RF characteristics um, so in this case they have some tech box atten at antennas here uh, because in this case we're not using antenna for radiated emission test so just put none moving towards the segment setup now one of the reasons I use this software is because it does the segment scan automatically and then basically stitch all the segments together and then giving the plot uh, on the uh, picture showing here. If I hadn't had this software that means I would need to do the scan manually by myself using the spectral analyzer and then I need to find a way of stitching each segment together. You might ask, oh, why do you need to scan it by segment? Well, that is a good question. Most of the spectrum analyzers sweep the frequency range in discrete steps. Typically, the number of frequency steps per sweep 
is identical with the number of display pixels in the X direction. For instance, the Siglent SSA3021 model that I have has a resolution of 751 frequency points per sweep. Well, I think most of the RIGO ones, I believe they have about 600 measurement points per sweep. Spectrum analyzers really power up with the sweep set to full span and resolution bandwidth um, set to 1 megahertz. When you measure some signals, sometimes you will find that the amplitude or the frequency point is not displayed correctly. This is due to the fact that if we look at the filter curves and the spacing between adjacent frequency points, you will see that if I divide 2.1 gigahertz by 751 frequency points, this will result roughly 2.8 megahertz. Yeah, so there's a big difference between 2.8 megahertz and 1 megahertz. Let's take another example. We look at the conducting emission test we're going to do. In most cases, this frequency sweep starts from 150 kilohertz up to 30 megahertz and has a resolution bandwidth of 9 kilohertz. These are all defined by CISPR. If we want to make a full sweep across the entire 30 megahertz, that means we, ha we can do the math, 30 megahertz divided by 751 points, that gives us 39.9 .9 kilohertz. And compared again with the resolution band with 9 kilohertz, surely you will miss lots of useful information. So in order to cover the entire frequency spectrum. CISPR 16 actually defines the adjacent frequency points shall not be more than half of the resolution bandwidth. So in this case, again, 9 kilohertz divided by 2 should be 4.5 kilohertz. So with this information, and the uh, we as, as, as long as we understand the uh, our spectrum analyzer model correctly, we can do the math, and it shows on in this table based on the model that I have, which means that for the conducted emission test we're going to do from 150 kilohertz to 30 megahertz, we will need to split the entire spectrum into at least nine segments with a uh, uh, span of 3.38 megahertz. Now, you can of course do this test manually. So basically you, you uh, start the frequency range at certain point and then you only scan for a range of 3.38 megahertz and then you start the next segment again, saving all the data in the spectrum analyzer in, in data points and then you extract those data and then you can do some post analysis which is fine but by having a software that can do it f for you automatically within you know five or six minutes really saves huge amount of time and effort that's why i tend to use software when when it comes to emc pre-compliance testing such as this you have segment set one and segment set two. And the set one is going to do a scan based on the average um, scan. And the segment set two is based on the peaks scan. Okay. And uh, you can see set one is now selected. So if I click start now, the software basically will tell the spectral analyzer to start an average scan. Once that is done, I then can select set two and then start it again and the result will show here as well with the peak scan okay and um, so that's the most important parameters to set for this test so we set it just as it is okay and put it back to set one and what else we need to uh, to do I think yeah for a quick scan that's probably enough um, it's worth mentioning that you can save this project, right? So with all this test set up, I already 
you know defined i can save the project yeah I, the default uh, folder is still within the source folder so i would suggest you keep in that location so i put in source and i can just give a a, a name so in this case i can call it pre compliance test one okay so then i'll save it so next time i can just load project which is already saved here and i don't need to change all these uh, settings okay so now with all this set up and um, connected properly to my spectrum analyzer the next thing i need to do is click start okay so now we're gonna click start and as you can see um, the uh, software basically sends commands to my spectrum analyzer the uh, scanning started now all the resolution bandwidth video um, bandwidth and stop and start frequency has been uh, predefined as i said in the segment um, file so you can see here we're doing a frequency step of 235 kilohertz scan so that's the first segment scanning finished now we're starting from 3.75 megahertz uh, sorry we're starting from 2.5 megahertz and now we'll start stop at 5 megahertz um, yeah so you can see all the uh, values are predefined in the setup file in EMC view so very easy we just wait until the scan of each segment is finished all these data will be trans transferred back to the software and the software will automatically stitch all the segment uh, scanning results together and put the results on the um, output um, file so let's just have a look so yeah yeah the first segment data is now stored back into the PC as you can see from the screen we have a uh, average scanning results showing here and currently it is still be below the um, margin line which is pretty good um, the first scan also starts from 150 kilohertz to 2.5 megahertz and as we just speak the next scan the segment data will be now put in again and here also you can see the estimated remaining time which is estimated at six minutes left so it's pretty easy as I said you just wait for six minutes in the meantime you can get yourself a cup of tea and um, just wait until the results are finished okay so after a few minutes both uh, scanning for average and peak scanning are now completed and we have the results showing in the uh, software interface and you can already see that I have labeled um, these limits correctly and I can also label these two traces uh, which are just plotted right doing that is fairly easy you just to you just need to uh, go to labels yeah and then uh, set label then here there, there's a new label then you can drag easily and then right click and then you can edit so basically here we know the purple line is peak value so I can just say uh, PK yeah and then you can do the same for the average okay so the we can see here in this case the um, plotted results are all under the limit and also even within the margin we Get, we, we, we predefined which is pretty good uh, which shows this product surely will pass conducting emission uh, uh, scanning so there are a lot more functions within the capability of this software which we can't cover everything in one session some useful features are found very um, high efficient for instance if you don't want to do a full scan from 150 kilohertz to 30 megahertz what you can do is you can select segments here and you can see um, you can drag each seg segment into different position and you can by selecting all or specific segment then you just do a very short 
uh, quick scan and to just focus on th that area. So that's one function I highly recommend. Uh, other useful functions include you can also use this software as a generator to generate um, uh, you know, your spectrum analyzers tracking generator connected to an RF amplifier to do some immunity tests. One other useful function is you, if you go to fire and then you go to utilities, you can save the results as pictures, as CSV file or what I found most useful is you save chart. So by clicking save chart, you basically save all the raw data in your computer. And one of the benefits is, of course, we just did this scan for this benchmark testing. We save this chart, and then we can do another scan of another product. Perhaps it's your, a product from your customer that asks you to look at. And then you can basically compare the performance of that product with these benchmark results. So in this session, we demonstrated step-by-step step how to set up a pre-compliance conducted emission test by using a LISM module, a spectrum analyzer, and an EMC view software. We explained why it is important to always make sure that high voltage safety practice is executed first. We then explained why it is important to do the scanning segment by segment. Uh, if you have the software, of course, the software will do it for you very easily. If you don't have the software, I would also suggest you do it segment by segment and perhaps using some uh, other software to stitch the segment together later on. We used a well-branded, good quality product for benchmark testing and the results show the conducting emission is within the limit. So this often serves as a benchmark testing and then when you have other product to test, you can always use this result as a benchmark, as a reference. I hope you enjoy this video and if you like it, please share with your colleagues. And also if you like it, please subscribe to our channel and also visit our website for more information. Thank you very much.